in the last stream, we were working on finishing up the Alpha Act questline, the Primal Age questline, and we were working towards crafting the Scroll of All Knowledge, which we have now acquired, this guy right here. We got it via the use of the Runic Altar, this guy over here, and in doing so, we unlocked the next stage, the Industrial Age, and we unlocked the Industrial Age quest. It does say read me, although there is very little to read, but ticking that does unlock the Industrial Age for us, and there are now multiple quests for us to take a look at. So, first of all is Litmus Paper, used to show what is inside a crucible. Okay, so this requires a crucible from Reactive, and we can turn a regular paper into a Litmus Paper. Right at the end of the last episode, we did get one extra piece of sugarcane, and I feel like we might as well go ahead and actually use that sugarcane in a botany pot to start growing more sugarcane before we move on with anything else here, especially if we are going to need paper going forward. So let me get one, two, three, four, five more blocks of clay, and of course we can place those down around our pure daisy to get more terracotta. This here is done. Uh, in fact, I do believe that as we saw last episode, I want to get five more brick here because we can use that five extra brick to make a brick hopper. And then we can use that brick hopper to upgrade our regular botany pot to yet another hopping botany pot. So we'll drop you down on there. We'll grab some more wood. We'll get ourselves yet another regular old Minecraft chest. We can use that chest to make a wooden hopper and we can use that wooden hopper once again to make a brick hopper. Thankfully in this pack, all of the items do stay inside of the crafting table while you're crafting, which is very nice indeed, even if you leave the crafting table. And so now we just want to grab our one by one storage drawer. We can place that down right here next to our botany pot for wheat. And then we should be able to craft that with a regular botany pot, which looks something like this, boom, and boom, and boom. Now I do believe we can plant sand on Dirt, I think that works inside the botany pot. It totally does. Does it get faster if I create farmland? I think it does. Again, if we type in sugar and press U, you can see here that dirt has a speed of 1x, whereas farmland has a speed of 1.05x. So it's only a 5% increase in speed, but it is very easy for us to just right click the botany pots. I feel like we might as well. And that should start getting sugarcane for us that we can use to get ourselves some more paper. We do already have some paper though. And so as soon as we get a crucible, we can then go ahead and get this litmus paper, hopefully fairly quickly. The crucible is made by clicking on a cauldron with a scroll of transmutation. See the journal for details. So the scroll of transmutation is what we just acquired. And a crucible is something that we didn't do in the last chapter right here. Uh, the cauldron is a recipe that we've not yet done. Now, thankfully, making another mana pool is fairly easy and we do have more than eight iron in our element chest. And so getting the cauldron, which only requires seven iron actually, is fairly straightforward. So now that's actually the uh, alpha quest line complete, but now we should be able to place that down, right click it with the scroll of transmutation. And uh, that does delete the scroll of transmutation, which is interesting. I guess it's really not that hard to remake it given that we get all of these runes back. So uh, if we need that again, we can always do that. But now if we want to make litmus paper, we need to drop paper in and that says light, and mind. I don't really know what that means. I'm assuming if I just drop this in, nothing happens. Yeah, that is the case. Okay, we might come back to that one. Right here, there is a quest that says, not really hell. To visit purgatory, dig down in the overworld until you reach Y level negative 62. When you move below that Y level, you will teleport. Interesting. So we might give that a try then. We might see about heading all the way down. I think we already have a tunnel that goes pretty far down on the Y level spectrum. Uh, before we go, let me quickly see if we have any more coins hanging out in here. We do, we got 57 bronze and 17 silver coins, and that gives us a fair amount of coins in total. Um, let's head down here and let's see if we can't get through to, uh, to Purgatory. I am gonna grab my tempad. It is very dark down here. We're at negative 50, we're getting close. Oh, there we go. Quest complete, not really hell. So this is Purgatory. It seems surprisingly non-hostile. I was expecting a much more hostile environment. Let's go Purgatory. Add location. So now we can get back here without 
having to uh, to run down. I do see a lot of villagers here, and the quest book did say, yeah, that we can actually trade with villagers to get coins, or in this case, I assume we give them clay and they give us bronze, which is interesting. This is actually a pretty good conversion. That's a lot of bronze coins. Um, I don't know if I can, like, craft up the bronze coins into silver coins. I don't think you can, but it might well be worth potentially trading with these guys. 99 bronze coins for 12 bricks seems a little extortionate. Do you guys have anything... You got beds. I mean, coming down here earlier would have maybe made our lives easier because uh, last episode it took us way too long trying to find a single Minecraft bed. Oh, so they do have barrels in the roof here. Interesting. Look at that. There's some iron, some aluminum, we got some copper, some tin, and we got some more nuggets. Don't you worry, my friend. I'm not I'm not doing anything. Nothing to nothing to see here. I could do with maybe marking. I'm gonna take the door off. That's gonna seem real rude. But I'm going to take the door off any house that I've looted, just so I don't mistakenly try and loot the same house again. I don't really need the acacia door, so we can put that down elsewhere. But um, it's going to make it a little easier to loot these houses if we move through like this. I've been told by the chat that if you get a hundred copper coins in your purse, that will automatically become a silver coin. And I assume the same is maybe true for silver. Maybe when you get a hundred silver, it will uh, alter go up to gold. But um, I've gone through and I've raided quite a few of these houses. I've got some iron, some copper, some nickel nuggets and whatnot. I don't know if there's much else that we need here just yet. So let's head on back through to the overworld. We can always teleport back here if there's something that I missed. But I do notice a very interesting quest up at the top here for the ASGD, the Automated Cosmic Dust Artificial Supernova Generating Device. So if we can automate cosmic dust, that's going to allow us to essentially get an infinite amount of elements. And this recipe doesn't seem too difficult. We need 28 everythingness blocks, which we can definitely get. We need one gravity block, which is just crafting the gravity that we have. And of course, we can make more gravity very easily. We did it in the first episode. We need four stars, which again are just hydrogen, helium, and gravity. You get the gravity back there. And then we just need 36 cosmic dust, which is definitely going to be the hardest bit of this. We're going to need so many of these stars, but none of that should really be too difficult, really. I think for the most part, uh, we could definitely do with bigger chests. Do we have the iron chest mod? We don't, which is unfortunate. However, what we can probably do is make one or two more storage drawers, and we can start moving some of our stuff out of the chests. For example, I noticed that we're taking up quite a bit of space with cobblestone. If we move all of that cobblestone out and into its own drawer, that frees up a fair bit of space in here for some of the other junk that I have in my inventory. Of course, there are things I want to hold on to, and the elements ideally are going to go in this chest down here. Uh, we probably do want to get more chests, though, because there's not really anything else here that I could feasibly put into a storage drawer. Like, there are things I could put into storage drawers, but we don't have that much of anything else, really, which is uh, is unfortunate. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some more electrons, some more up quarks, some more down quarks. We'll also grab all of our uh, gluons, all our protons, all our neutrons, and we'll head back through to the nothingness dimension with our void harvester, and we'll see about getting just a ton of atoms to try and make a bunch of hydrogen. We can then, of course, use that hydrogen with the philosopher's stone to make helium, and then once we have a bunch of hydrogen and helium, we can make a bunch of stars with the gravity and see about getting a ton of cosmic dust. So that is the plan. All right, so we've got just over a stack of hydrogen. Let's craft some of that hydrogen down into helium, and then let's see about crafting that into a couple of stars. So gravity we have, let's do hydrogen and helium. That gets us a lot of stars, and of course each one of these we can right click to get some cosmic dust, and specifically we're looking for 36 cosmic dust in total. It looks like you do get a, a somewhat random amount of cosmic dust each time, but that's 28, that's 34. I think we already have a few cosmic dust over in one of these chests here. And especially, yeah, we've got three more there, which does take us over 36, so we can craft up our four cosmic blocks. Fantastic. And if we're going to make a cosmic dust generator, oh, we need nine cosmic dust blocks. Never mind. We need 81 cosmic dust, not 36. That is my bad. Um, in that case, let me head back and let's get even more hydrogen and helium. Uh, I should probably take any hydrogen and helium that we have out of here. We've got a little bit of hydrogen. I don't think we have any helium. We don't, which is unfortunate. But uh, let's head back and let's see if we can't get yet more of that. All right, so we are very close here, actually. We've got nine cosmic dust and we've got four 
extra stars. We just need a little bit more here, which should be doable. I have what it takes to make quite a few more protons, and we should, by that extension, also have enough to make a few more neutrons as well, which, of course, allows us to make our final few atoms. That gets us hydrogen, and that hydrogen gets us helium, and that one extra helium, I think, is all that we need, because if we do this, we get one more star. We can then craft all of those stars into these blocks of star, which is what we need for the quest. We've completed that. We've also got the nine blocks. We do need 28 everything this blocks. We can, of course, go ahead and harvest those by just right-clicking with our void harvester. And once we've got at least 28 of the nothingness block, then the only thing we're missing is another gravity. So we need a beryllium, a lithium, and a boron. Let's go see what we've got in the overworld. I'm going to store away my atoms and my parts here in this chest. Again, just so they don't fill up my chest in the overworld. We can always come back and craft with those if we need them. So we have lithium. We might have boron. Let me check. We don't. Uh, do we have any beryllium? We also don't. That is fine. Let me bookmark beryllium. Let me bookmark boron. And I guess we're just going to go and make some more atoms so we can then craft the uh, hydrogen and helium up through into boron and beryllium, just like we did in episode one. And that's going to get us the other gravity. We can use the gravity that we already have, of course. And I might even take that for the time being, just to see if we can set this up. And then we can go and make another gravity in just a second so that we always have one to, uh, to control our gravity as and when we need it. But uh, as a reward for completing that quest, we got given the Universe IO guidebook here. Help regarding items from the Universe Utils mod. And so the ASGD, the ASGD, is the uh, multi-block that we're looking to make. The Artificial Supernova Generator Device, or ASGD for short, is a multi-block that allows you to automatically generate cosmic dust. Note that the multi-block needs a barrel or any inventory above the gravity block, plus a redstone signal in order to work. So this seems pretty straightforward, and I guess we could probably put it over here, potentially. It looks like... You have one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, like this, going around the base. And then, if I'm not mistaken, it looked like a three by three of cosmic dust in the middle, like that. Yep. And then it goes up by three on each side with the everythingness. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and three, two, one. We then need to put the stars atop that, which is going to be easier if we have a little uh, pillar in the middle here. One, two, three three and four and then once we have that down the final piece of the puzzle is just the gravity block in the center and i think that is the structure that we are after so let's get another storage drawer that we're going to use to hold our cosmic dust and let's place that directly above the gravity block because apparently that is where all of the cosmic dust is going to be ejected from and then if we grab just one stick and one cobblestone we should be able to craft up a lever and if I put that down on the back I assume of the gravity block that starts spinning and maybe generating look at that cosmic dust nice so that's got us two cosmic dust and then four if I sleep and accelerate time does that get us a bunch of cosmic dust very quickly it does we got 76 cosmic dust we're also up at 11 sugar cane I'm gonna sleep again because we want to sleep through the night we don't want to be going around during the night just because we don't want any rogue skeletons attacking us but it looks like now we basically have an infinite amount of cosmic dust which we can of course just right click whenever we like to get an infinite amount of random elements and so it's probably around this time that we do want to look at maybe getting storage drawers for the elements however somebody in the twitch chat did make a good point in that all of the elements do have an emc value and so once we have something like the transmutation table or the transmutation tablet, it's possible that we can just store all of our elements inside of the transmutation table and we shouldn't have to worry about storing them all. Either way, we're up to 390 cosmic dust now, which is fantastic. And you take some of that out and we can just throw that all on the ground and just pick all of that up and dump it all in this chest here. So getting elements really shouldn't be a problem for us now, which is very nice indeed. It's a very interesting way of doing the pack. But... Now we do need to figure out some of these other quests here. The blaze mesh is interesting. I think we can potentially use that. Oh, we can get obsidian with it. I thought we could put it under the um, the mana pool, but I guess not. Um, either way, let me put that away. And let me uh, put these bits of cosmic dust back as well, because I don't actually want uh, all of the elements, at least not just yet. So, bizarre stone 
is the compressed stone that we do need in order to make a regular Minecraft furnace. Again, this is made in the crucible, this time with smooth stone and acid. And then this quest here is again kind of the same here. We've got iron that goes into the crucible and then you get compressed iron out. So it's a little bit cryptic the way that this works, but I believe that the idea here is that we take our crucible that we have and then I believe we have a bucket, we do. We can put water into that crucible. Oh, we can't. Okay, I think it needs to be an iron bucket. Can I do this? I totally can. If we take an iron bucket of water, that we can put into the crucible, that makes sense. And then we have to take elements that we can use to make the water attributable to the, to the word that's said. For example, here it says acid. And so I think if we take phosphorus, which we might have, we do, we can drop that phosphorus into the water over here, and that's going to turn the water, or make the water more acidic. And so if we wanted, for example, to get a compressed iron, we need to drop an Fe into acidic water. So we do have some Fe in here, and of course we could get more if we if we wanted to. I'm not quite sure how much, oh look at that, nice. I'm not quite sure how much phosphorus you have to put in in order for that to work. I think that is where the litmus paper comes into play because I think the litmus paper, if you right click it on your crucible, will tell you like what level of, of acid you're at or how much acid you're, is in there or even if this is currently regarded as, uh, as acid. And I think we have to do the same thing for some of these other recipes here. For example, this requires light and mind and Light kind of makes sense. I believe it's neon is uh, is what we use for light. But then I think nitrogen is what we use for mind, which makes a little bit less sense. I also don't know if you can use the same cauldron again. I don't know if I have to break it and replace it. But before we do break and replace it, let me grab some cobblestone. And we are going to have to be quick here because the smooth stone gets turned into living rock very quickly. But I want to try and get some smooth stone so we can try and make some of this bizarre stone before we, you know, move away from our acid-based cauldron. I'm being told by the Twitch chat that I can shift right click to empty the crucible, which is very handy indeed. I'm going to be ready because it turns from smooth stone into living rock in like five seconds. So I'm ready. Okay, so I messed up a little bit there. I got six smooth stone, but I still had my pickaxe set to mining tunnel, which is why we now have a mining tunnel here and not uh, an enough stone. So let me put down another eight of these. It does take a little while to go from cobblestone to stone. So while we wait for that, let me go see if I can drop some of this smooth stone into here. I can. It's not the fastest thing in the world, and it looks like now we're actually out of acid, which is interesting. Again, I want to keep an eye out over here because this is going to transform any second now. Nice, we got all of it this time. Again, we need eight compressed stone here if we want to make just a regular old Minecraft furnace, which is currently what I'm trying to do. So this is now no longer acidic enough, but we can, of course, put more phosphorus in. And that should allow us to drop in more smooth stone. We need to do one, two, three, four. Nice, and then we can take that and craft it into a regular old furnace. Nice, okay, cool. So now we can actually use the more efficient bread making method that we showed previously. That is good to know. And I guess before we start looking at delving deeper into pneumatic craft, let's instead see if we can't get this litmus paper. So if I shift right click, that's gonna empty the crucible. And if we drop in some water and then we go with nitrogen and neon we might be able to get this to a point where we can actually get our litmus paper so let's do one two three nitrogen and then one two three neon that just ate the paper let's throw in more neon and more nitrogen and let's try that again we can get as much paper as we like that still just ate the paper, which is really <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, we might need a fair bit more neon, potentially, to make that work. Not that that's going to be particularly difficult for us. We do, of course, have access to uh, an infinite amount of elements here. All right, so we've got 17 more nitrogen and neon here. I'm going to drop all of these in. 
and then we'll try again with the paper. Hey, okay, that one did actually work. So we got the litmus paper, and then now there is a quest that actually tells us the breakdown here. So body is oxygen, uh, caustic, also known as acid, is phosphorus, curse is argon, light is neon, mind is nitrogen, soul is chromium, verdant is organic stuff, so I assume it'll be samplings, leaves, etc. Oh, it says that right there. Uh, vital is sacrifice a passive mob, interesting, and then warp is strontium. Okay, that's good to know. And so that's how we're going to work with this crucible going forward. And so now we're probably going to need a lot more compressed iron, actually. Uh, how much iron do we have? We've got 5, 14 FE here, actually. Um, again, we do need to uh, kind of clear this now, which is unfortunate because we just spent all that neon and nitrogen. But now if I put this in and I right click with the litmus paper, it says nothing. However, I think if we were to take more phosphorus and drop that in, if I drop one in and right click, it says acid low. And so acid low might not be good enough to convert the iron. It's not. So we might have to get up to acid medium. So it took quite a few to get up to medium, maybe like 12-ish, or maybe 16 even. But uh, once you have it up to medium, it does look like it lasts a little while. But then obviously it kind of slowly but surely uh, deteriorates. So now that we've just put the iron in, it might be back down to low. It is, yeah. So the more phosphorus you put in, the more acidic it becomes. But then as you use that phosphorus to make the compressed iron, that then lowers the acidity level, which makes complete sense. So now that we have the iron, there are three quests here that we can work on. There is the makeshift pump, the gas lift. That requires a pressurized tube, which is just compressed iron and some glass. And then we also need fortified rock. And the fortified rock is just regular stone with compressed iron. So uh, we are probably going to have to start making use of our furnace here. Of course, I believe we can go ahead and do a little bit of sleeping here to make our furnace nice and fast. And at the same time, we could also do with getting some more sand via the use of the philosopher's stone. Let's take a quick peek here. How is that doing? Yeah, that's smelted up very nicely. Um, let's take the philosopher's stone here. And if we do this under here... That's going to allow us to break all of this sand at once and then just take that up and smelt it in one big batch into glass, which we can do while we sleep. Nice. Okay, cool. So we can take our iron and craft that with some glass. I believe that's the wrong way around. I think it's like this. It is. That gets us the pressurized tube. And then if we craft the stone with the compressed iron, that gets us the reinforced stone. And then strengthened brick is just four reinforced stone crafted together sure that makes sense and then wall is just eight reinforced bricks so we might need a quite a bit of uh, reinforced brick here but that's fine we can smelt really as much cobblestone as we like over here there is the pressure generator uh, because pneumatic craft is basically based entirely around pressure it does require another furnace though so we are going to need some more compressed stone i am thinking that it could well be worth getting another crucible although i guess for the time being the bizarre stone just requires more smooth stone we can now of course smelt regular stone into smooth stone though which is uh, is probably our best bet here so let's take a full stack of cobblestone let's drop that into there and then let's do a quick bit of acceleration to get that full stack of stone we'll then smelt that entire stack into smooth stone and then we'll drop all of that into the crucible to get some more compressed stone that we can then use to make yet another furnace all right, so there's 60 smooth stone. Uh, we did already have some, that's fine. Let's take half of that and let's drop that into the old uh, acid-based crucible here. Fantastic, I do like that it does it all at once. That's very helpful. And that's gonna get us four more furnaces. One of those furnaces we can use to make the air compressor. So we do need more reinforced bricks for that. That's fine, we have what it takes to make more reinforced bricks and boom. So the air compressor is what we can use to make pressure. And uh, basically this is fairly straightforward. You put fuel into the slot and it begins to produce pressure that then comes out of this side and you can connect up these pressure tubes to send that pressure wherever you want it to go. So pressure is kind of like the power equivalent for pneumatic craft. Now the next quest here is the advanced generator. I don't know if we need that just yet. We'll come back to that in a second. Down here, we've got the make shift pump. Uh, hold shift for info. It says a gas lift is a type of pump which uses pressure to pump up liquids. When placed down, it requires pressure and drill pipes to operate. 
The gas lift places drill pipes downwards until it hits a liquid. When the solid blocks are encountered, they will be dug. This uses pressure proportional to the block's hardness. The minimum pressure required to operate increases proportionally to the working depth. So I assume this is like some kind of liquid pump, which could be useful. But uh, I think the next thing we ought to make is wall. And for the wall, we need a lot more reinforced stone, which means we probably need just more regular stone here, because I don't think this is going to be enough. We'll take all of that, though, and we'll craft basically all of that into reinforced stone, and then we'll craft that to make some walls. We'll do this. That gets you 16 wall, which is actually not bad. And then here, the, it wants us to make a pressure chamber glass, two pressure chamber interfaces, and a pressure chamber valve. The pressure chamber, by the way, is uh, just a multi-block structure from Pneumaticraft, which I assume is what we are working towards here. So the pressure chamber glass is fairly straightforward, and we can make some of that fairly easily. The pressure chamber interface does require a hopper, but we do have a fair bit of iron now, thanks to all of the iron that we stole from those villagers. And by stole, I do, of course, mean uh, borrowed permanently. So let's do this. We'll get two chests, because I believe we need two hoppers here for two interfaces. But you get two at a time, so never mind. We'll just put that hopper away for the future. And then finally, the pressure chamber valve is just a pipe and some wall. Nice. So now we've unlocked Coprum, Aurum, and Ferrum. Interesting. So each one of these I see can be made using the pressure chamber. So if I'm not mistaken, the pressure chamber looks a little something like this. It's a three by three by three structure. It does require a lot more wall, and we currently don't have the ability. Although we do have the ability to make more wall. Ignore me. If we do this, we can get more pressure chamber wall. And so if we do something like this, we can have... We'll put the valve here, and then we're going to connect that up to the pressure tubing like that. So it's going to get pressure from this air compressor. Then we can put down our interfaces. We'll put down one here, and we'll put down one here. I think that's right. I think the blue is in and the orange is out, and I think you want to put these down so that they kind of face the same way so that you can have one be the input and one be the output. I think that's how those work, although I've not played with New Magic Craft in a little while here. Then we can fill the rest of these in. It is somewhat useful to have at least one of these walls here be made of pressure chamber glass, just so you can look in and see what's going on inside of the pressure chamber. But then the rest can just be filled in like so. And you'll know you've done it right because it forms into a multi-block and makes that sound. So now we might be able to use our interfaces to get things into here. Let me see if we can get this to work. So if we want to make ferrum, we need 16 iron. If we want to make gold dust, we need 16 gold and copper, of course, 16 copper. Okay, so in here, do we have any of that? We do have more than 16 gold. So let's give that a try. If we take 16 of these, can I put those in here? I can't. I might be able to hopper into that. Let me give that a try. If I hopper into here, that does go in. And we'll know if it's worked because we'll see the gold inside here. I heard the sound effect and it looked like it went in. Apply more pressure to the pressure chamber. It requires more pressure. Okay, that is fine. If we check the quest book here and we check JI, we need between two and five bars of pressure. The minimum is two bars. And so all we should have to do is put some kind of fuel into this air compressor, and that's going to start slowly but surely increasing the amount of pressure available in the network. And once it gets above two, the pressurized chamber here should put the gold in and should compress that down, uh, that gold down into gold dust. Now, you do need to be careful here because if your pressure goes too high and you get into the red zone, then things will explode. Usually our pipes will just explode. Thankfully, not your devices. You can make, however, multiple air compressors and connect all of those up to make this faster. So if we do this and this and we do this and this, we could then take some more planks and put those planks uh, into here, you'll see that these all have the same pressure because the pressure is network wide. So no matter what device you're looking at, if they're connected together via pressurized tube, you'll see that pressure in everything you look at. You'll see it even if we look at the uh, the tubes here, the tubes are at 0.6 out of 5 bar. And we're going to try and get that up to 2 bar to get the pressure chamber to work. Now we could sleep to make this faster, but again, if it, uh, if it goes too high, 
it would explode, which is probably not ideal. I'll sleep a little bit because it is a tiny bit slow, but I'm going to be very cautious about not sleeping for too long because I really don't want it to get too high. Okay, we're very close to two bar here. 1.95, 9.6, 9.7. Once it hits two, there we go. Look at that. We get gold dust. Nice. Okay, so it looks like we do have to potentially pipe out of this. I'm being told by the Twitch chat that this will eject. It just needs an inventory to eject to. If I put a chest here, it does eject. Nice. Okay, cool. So there is the gold dust. And then, of course, we can just smelt that, I believe, into a gold ingot. And uh, we can also turn copper into gold, which is interesting. But uh, if I just put this in here, that is going to smelt into gold. And so now we need to do the same with copper. Thankfully, the pressure is not really used too much. Like the pressure does go up but not by a ton, and you can take these out of here. And the pressure should basically stay where it, uh, where it was, unless you break any blocks. If you break any blocks, you'll hear like a hissing sound and the pressure will start to go down. Um, over here, do we have any copper? We do, we need 16 copper. So we'll take that 16 copper and we'll drop that in over here. Again, we should hear all the sound effects once all the copper has been moved in. And there we go, copper dust. Nice, okay, cool. And so the final piece of the process here is iron, which we do not have. And so we are going to have to once again, uh, get a bunch of cosmic dust, which we're basically full up on now, by the way. We hit the uh, the max the draw can hold, which is 2048. But uh, if we throw a bunch of this out, we should hopefully get some more iron fairly quickly. And then we can put 16 iron in, a little bit of cosmic dusting later. We now have 16 iron or more than 69 and so once again we're still at uh, between two and five bar here so we can put the iron in and that should become iron dust for whatever reason the quest didn't want to complete the gold one there that's fine we'll put that back and oh i do see we have pretty pipes available interesting that is a mod that i did just play with in my last mod pack which is interesting here but there's iron dust and of course we do already have iron ingots we might as well smelt this up i feel like there's no reason to keep it but if we do that that should complete the iron quest as well it totally does and then now we have a mana steel ingot which in this pack we can get by dropping gold into a mana pool that is completely fine do we have enough mana of course we do boom there is our first mana steel ingot and then down here even stronger magic infused metal ingot terra steel this does require a terrestrial agglomeration blade which shouldn't be too difficult for us to make actually it does require lapis which we don't currently have however if we drop cosmic dust into a mana pool with blue concrete we can get lapis and concrete shouldn't be too difficult for us to make right we can get concrete powder with gravel sand and then any kind of dye and uh, if we need blue concrete it looks like we can just transmute different colors of concrete in the world to make that happen the blue concrete just needs to be underneath the mana pool that seems pretty doable the only thing we don't have is gravel and in fact actually i think we do have some gravel because i think we found some yeah while we were mining earlier we could definitely do with more gravel and it looks like we can get gravel from sandstone which is not ideal but i think the easiest way for us to get gravel is just going to be through mining so i think i might head back down into this uh cave here real quick preferably with a few more torches and we'll see if we can't get a bunch of gravel that we can then turn into some concrete we really only need a tiny bit though now that i think about it because we only need just enough gravel to make one concrete once we've got one concrete we should be able to cycle that through into blue concrete fairly easily so let's take just all of this gravel here way more than we're going to need actually which is very nice indeed i'll take the stack and 10 well uh, you know what? i'll grab this as well while i'm here why not nice then we can just uh temp pad back home I'm going to grab a purple petal here and use that to make a purple dye. And then from there, we should be able to make purple concrete. The reason I'm going with purple is that it looked like purple kind of transmutes into blue fairly easily. So we'll take this, of course, concrete powder. You can turn to concrete just by placing it down next to water. Once we have one purple concrete, we can then hopefully just transmute that into blue. We totally can. Look at that. Nice. And so now we can take this. And if we replace the everything that's block under here with the blue concrete, in theory, now we should be able to drop the cosmic dust in here and get 
lapis out. So let's go and see about grabbing some of our lapis. Let's also make sure that we have our bread on us because we are getting a little low on food. I do see some illagers hanging out in the background there, which is not ideal, but I'll leave them to their own business unless they decide to, uh, to attack me first. We do need 36 lapis here because we need three blocks of the stuff. Thankfully, it looks like the, uh, the recipe doesn't require much in the way of mana and so there we go we got 37 lapis you love to see it let's craft three blocks of lapis or i guess four blocks of lapis and then if we do want this terrestrial agglomeration plate we do need a block of mana steel which means we are going to need uh, a bunch more gold right now we have 48 gold which is gonna get us three more ingots that's only gonna take us up to four mana steel in total so we're probably gonna have to go ahead and do a bit more cosmic dusting to get the remainder of the gold. I am intrigued about how far away we are from the transmutation table. The transmutation table here requires, oh, I guess this is the recipe, right? I was going to say it requires graphite blocks because you can smelt charcoal into graphite and make graphite blocks. So that seems easy enough. We have the philosopher's stone and then obsidian. We might just be able to get because we can turn lava into obsidian. Can I mine obsidian with my void harvester is the question because if i can we might be able to get the uh, the transmutation tablet right away here i it looks like this is the intended recipe potentially a block of compressed iron obsidian and a cosmic ingot that is potentially easier but it does require a ton of mana and so it seems like it honestly might be easier if we can do oh but i can't transmute the lava which is unfortunate like i can't um, right click it here i could try getting a bucket of water and see if that works so that works and at the top there it does say that i can break this so if i do that a bit more and i try and alter mine this i should get basically all of the obsidian all at once i do i'm being told by the twitch chat though that we might not be able to get the graphite because we might not have unlocked it yet. But I'm going to give it a go. I'll throw some uh, charcoal into the furnace and we'll see if that gets us the graphite. That seems to work. We have the graphite ingot. Whether or not we can craft that into a graphite block is to be seen, but the only way to find out is to uh, drop yet more charcoal into the furnace and then uh, get some more wood. We can and probably should get another hopping botany pot because you can also uh, put saplings into that botany pot and uh, that is going to be a faster way of getting wood in the future, just an automated way of passively getting wood. Again, it's not particularly fast, but neither are the sugarcane or the wheat, but we've already got 94 sugarcane and 200 wheat just because it works in the background and, of course, is sped up whenever we sleep. The block recipe also works here, and so I'm fairly confident that this recipe for the transmutation tablet might actually work. I don't know if it's the intended method, because we are working towards getting a terrestrial agglomeration plate over on this side to make the terra steel. But again, it requires so much mana. The um, terra steel itself requires maybe a sixth of a mana pool worth of mana, but the transmutation tablet requires half a mana pool worth of mana which we do not have currently we could definitely get it with a combination of maybe more inner flames and of course the black lotuses but it appears like we can utilize just a ton of charcoal to get graphite and then we already have the obsidian so i think this alternate recipe for the transmutation tablet is very much so doable all right so we've got more graphite ingots let's craft those into graphite blocks and maybe we've done it look at that we have a transmutation table we can put that down on the ground somewhere and this is quite useful because now anything that has an emc value we can learn in our transmutation table and we can actually finally start to gain some emc which does help us out quite a bit unfortunately lapis no emc value there and a lot of the stuff that we have here doesn't have an emc value either graphite is probably going to be quite useful though and does gold gold doesn't have an emc but the thing that uh, makes this much nicer here, and the, the reason why I'm a little annoyed now that I think I did spend all of our gold, is that we can take, for example, uh, things like copper out of here, and because all of the elements have an EMC value that equates to their atomic number, we can put these in, and then we can turn things like obsidian into things like copper. And then we can take you know, a stack of copper out of the transmutation tablet, and we can put that in here to get four copper ingots, which is a lot easier. Gold is specifically what we need currently and i actually don't have any gold because we just turned all of our gold into 
gold dust, I think. We are still over two. I thought I put the gold in here. But I can't help but notice that we didn't get any gold out of there. Oh, yeah, no, the gold is in there. Let me take the... Uh, oh, I can't take the gold out. Not enough pressure. That's fine. I'm going to break this. And I am going to break this, even though that's going to lose us some pressure here. Because I want the gold back. But I didn't get the gold back. I think I just lost the gold and lost some pressure, which is not ideal. That's fine. Let's get some cosmic dust and let's go ahead and drop this on the ground until we get just one gold. As soon as we get one gold here, we should then be able to just transmute that. There we go. We've got eight gold, which is fantastic. We can then transmute that into really as much gold as we like. And of course, our best choice for getting EMC is going to be other elements here. We can take all of these elements and just drop them directly into the transmutation tablet. And then we can take as much gold as we'd like out of here and use that over in this hopper, which I will replace right about there, to allow us to get more gold ingots. And while we wait for that to process, I think I might as well take all of the remaining elements that we have here and just drop them all into the transmutation tablet. That way, going forward, whenever we need an element, we can just search for it at the top here. You know, if we needed titanium, we could just search titanium, and then we can pull out however much titanium we need, assuming we have enough EMC for that titanium. And on the off chance that we don't have enough EMC for that titanium, we can, of course, get more EMC incredibly quickly and easily via the use of the altar, because we have an infinite amount of cosmic dust. These nuggets do have an EMC value, so I feel like I might as well drop those in as well, this is also thankfully going to give us a lot more storage space over here to drop all of our stuff into. No real reason to put the cosmic dust in there when we can put the cosmic dust in over here. Never mind, we are completely full on that storage drawer, so that's not going to work. But uh, now, this is high. Apply more pressure. Is it because I've put too much in there? Is it because I put a full stack in at once? Do I need to only put 16 in because the pressure is getting quite high and I'm actually a little worried about high, uh, how high it's getting. I wonder if I should have just put 16 in and not 64. Oh no, never mind. We're up at 2.25 bar and that worked just fine, which is, is very nice indeed. It might just need just over two in order to work. Uh, but that's four. Let's keep going here because I do want to get that terrestrial agglomeration plate. So we'll drop all that in. Uh, we'll start smelting you up over here. Again, more fuel is required and uh, we could probably do with uh, maybe chopping down some more wood actually to get even more of that. Although, actually, while I wait for things to process here, let's make yet another botany pot and let's get wood automated. Chat is right. The gold dust here does actually have an EMC value and so we can put that in and then just take the gold dust out itself as opposed to having to go through the pneumatic chamber every time, which is quite useful. It means that we only have to do that once, and then we can just move on and use the transmutation table going forward. Uh, I have had quite a bit of luck by using the mining tunnel here to get clay. And we got more luck. Look at that. 38 clay. If I do it again here, do I get more clay? I do. 64. Nice. There must be clay down on both sides here, but I keep just doing a mining tunnel like that, and every time we get clay from it. So I think once you've found a spot for clay, that's uh, just the best way to go about it. But uh, let's see if we can't get yet another botany pot. Okay, so the saplings do have a few more outputs here. They have oak, sticks, apples, and saplings. So we are almost certainly going to want a two by two draw here, as opposed to the uh, two by one or one by one draws that we have already. Uh, I could make one using the oak that we have, but I would prefer if all of my draws were made out of the same dark oak. And so we'll just quickly grow another dark oak tree here. And I have crafted our first iron axe now that we have access to iron and so thankfully chopping this tree down is substantially faster than it was previously with our cobblestone axe. Nice once we have a decent amount of dark oak back over here I believe that the recipe for the 2x2 two two drawers requires four regular minecraft chests which we can do like so and then if we go and type in draw into REI we can then just shift click in this recipe of course as soon as we have a few more planks and boom, you do get four at a time with the two by two drawers. And we'll put this one down probably right about here. I'm going to replace that torch though, just so we don't get any mobs spawning. We can place our new hopping botany pot right about here. Again, we're going to put dirt into there. Again, we are going to till that dirt just to make it that little bit 
faster and then this time we can just go and drop a sampling in and that's going to slowly but surely generate passive wood samplings uh, apples and leaves for us which is going to be very nice indeed over here we have of course even more gold dust let's start smelting more of that in our furnace here we don't need quite that much but we do need i believe nine or eight maybe because we need to make the terrestrial agglomeration player which does need a block of mana steel we have one mana steel ingot which is here and we need eight more gold if we're going to get the nine mana steel required to get the mana steel block so let's quickly go ahead and sleep to accelerate the time and hopefully we'll come back to eight gold very quickly good stuff we can then come over here and if we have enough mana we can get two three four five six seven eight and nine mana steel ingots never mind there we go mana steel ingots and then boom we get a block of mana steel we already made our blocks of lapis we don't need four we only need three so we'll put one of those back and then we just need our runes right our runes are in here we'll take all of those unfortunately this is a crafting recipe not a runic altar recipe so this time the runes are actually used but that does give us a terrestrial agglomeration plate and so now we can use that terrestrial agglomeration plate in order to craft terra steel ingots now i do believe that if we want this to work we actually need more lapis blocks and living rock so we do have the lexica Britannia, if i'm not mistaken it is in here and if we look in here we can see this is the multi-block structure that is required for the terrestrial agglomeration plate so we need four blocks of lapis and five living rock and that needs to go in the ground we got four living rock which is very close but not quite enough that's fine let's grab some cobblestone let's place that down around our pure daisy and then while we wait for that to slowly but surely turn into living rock let's go ahead and get some more lapis by dropping yet more cosmic dust which i'm actually going to take out of here into our mana pool to see if we can't get three more blocks worth the living rock is done we'll take all of that and then over here somewhat close to the mana pool we'll put down the terrestrial agglomeration plate multi-block structure i am going to embed this into the ground a little bit here we could probably do with making some kind of shovel as well just to make this a little bit faster but here we have one two three four blocks of lapis with one two three four five blocks of living rock and then you place the terrestrial agglomeration plate not there but here in the center and then now if we drop onto that terrestrial agglomeration plate iron mana steel and copper we should be able to make the terra steel ingot however i believe normally the way this works is we do need a spark to make this happen we did get this blaze mesh as a quest reward and this does have an emc value so we can put that in there and that's basically uh, infinite blaze for us which is actually very nice indeed and so we should be able to take that and craft these sparks they do require gold nuggets that's fine we have gold nuggets and they do also require some kind of mystical petal it doesn't really matter which mystical petal you use so long as you use some mystical petal we'll use brown because we have excess of those available to us and two sparks is what we need we put one of these on top of the terrestrial agglomeration plate and one of these on top of the mana pool and that is now going to allow this terrestrial agglomeration plate to pull mana from this mana pool now in order for this to work we do need a little bit of mana in the mana pool probably more than we currently have so we'll take the one to the forest and i think we'll also take the remaining black lotuses that we have here and we'll drop those in it's going to be a pretty bad time if we don't have enough mana but yeah we got more than enough mana to make this work actually it is a little dark over here i might have broken a torch earlier and then not replaced it so i'm just going to do one of those as well just to be on the safe side there are quite a lot of mobs out there in the darkness and so now let's see we do need to get one more mana steel ingot that is fine we can do that very easily and then all we need is one copper and one iron so we should have both of those i'm pretty sure we should definitely go through the process of getting more iron and more copper dust that way we can take both of those and put them in the transmutation tablet and then going forward we can get uh, basically an infinite number of these very easily through emc but here we just drop one copper one iron and not one blaze powder we drop one copper one iron and one mana steel on the transmutation tablet and if you have enough mana in your mana pool you get terra steel nice that did use a little bit of our mana but that is that bit of the quest completed and i assume that if we want to progress further 
and unlock the next quest line. We probably have to work down this right hand side of the quest line here. I do notice there's another quest on the left for a cosmic ingot. We have already made a cosmic ingot, but uh, the quest book wants another one. So you know what? I'll do that. One, two, three, four. We'll drop those onto there. And that should very quickly smelt into a cosmic ingot. In fact, we do already have a cosmic ingot. And so that's that quest taken care of, which is good. And so, yeah, I think Chad, next time we'll come back, uh, we might look at pretty pipes. I'm not quite sure when we're going to need it or how soon. If we need a way of moving items around easily, then we can look into getting into the pretty pipes mod. But uh, I assume we're going to move down through the makeshift pump here to get some kind of liquid and then potentially complete some of these quests here, uh, moving further into pneumatic craft, I believe, which is hopefully going to be a lot easier now that we have the transmutation tablet. But uh, we'll do that and we'll hopefully push forward into the next act at some point fairly soon. But for now, unfortunately, we are out of time for this episode of Universe IO.